उसळलेल्या दर्याकडून पिसाळलेली आयाळ द्यावी भरलेल्या अशा भीमेकडून उपोबाची माळ द्यावी देणाऱ्यांनी तेच जावे घेणाऱ्यांनी घेत जावे घेता घेता एक दिवस देणाऱ्याचे भाग द्यावे दॅट्स द ट्रू ओपन इट इज व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट इन लाईफ टू नो द मिनिंग ऑफ वाय बिहाइंड एव्हरीथिंग लेट मी आस्क युअर क्वेश्चन इज द इन्स्टॉलेशन ऑफ आर क्लिनक्स डिफिकल्ट वेल अनफॉर्च्युनेटली इट इज इंडीड डिफिकल्ट बट वन्स यू अंडरस्टँड वाय इज इट डिफिकल्ट देन इव्हेंच्युअली यू विल फॉल इन लव्ह ऑफ आर क्लिनक्स इन्स्टॉलेशन बट बिफोर प्रोसिडिंग फर्दर इट्स नेसेसरी टू नो why it is difficult once a reporter asked edmund hillary a very hollow question which was by risking your life why do you want to climb the mount everest to which edmund hillary promptly replied because it's there someone asked picasso why do you paint picasso simply answered because i can there are n number of things which are readily available in the market but then still why do people try to make something similar on their own for instance in spite of having so many varied varieties of laptops with so many specifications easily available in the market still why does one collect the components and assemble their own pc in spite of having so many fancy and luxurious apartments ready and easily available in the market so why do some people live with a hope and a dream of buying land of their own and building a bungalow over it one can go to the hotel and buy any dish of their choice still why does one take all those efforts and cook at home for example see the efforts one takes to cook one maharashtrian dish get up get out of the house and buy tender coconut from the shop break them grate them and believe me it's very tedious work roast the sesame seeds grate the jaggery grate the betel nut peel the cardamom crush it grated jaggery coconut betel nut roasted sesame seeds crushed cardamom mix all of them together till they all become one get a dough ready make balls of it and then make small chapatis of it now while making the chapatis one has to take special care that all of them need to be of the same shape stuff the prepared mixture in chapatis now this procedure is again very delicate steam them for a very specific time you need to be ultra careful as time plays a vital role here if you don't keep a check on the time then all the efforts that you have put in so far would all go in a vain After putting in so many efforts for almost a day we finally have our dish ready which is modak but is it really necessary to do all of this absolutely not one can easily go to a hotel and can order the modak then why to put so much of efforts the one who understand the importance of words like we for us according to our needs only they will understand why art linux installation is difficult to so art linux in this video we will be installing a art linux first of all with the command way that means cli which is command line interface then we will add a gui into it which is xorg and cinnamon which is my favorite desktop and then third we will customize it we'll make a desktop operating system uh yeah before i start installing it i would like to uh, give one notice that i will be installing this in a vmware environment that's not that means a guest operating system i'll be installing why because i want to record my desktop um if i install it physically what will happen i need to record my monitor 
and obviously with the dslr camera the recording will be very bad and you won't be able to read the way or you won't be get benefit out of it which i don't want to happen that's the reason vmware it does not mean you cannot use these steps on a physical system the same steps which we will be following this video as it is every step is applicable to the physical system as well so let's begin so this is my VMware. As you can see here, I already downloaded a ISO image file. You just need to go to the uh, ARC website and from there you need to download a, a ISO image. I have mounted the ISO image in a CD drive and let me just start my VMware. I need to boot. So this is where, as you can see on your screen, it was a UEFI based operating system. That, that's the reason it was giving some UEFI related options. So this Arc Linux, which I'm installing is a UEFI based firmware it has. So basically there are two firmwares. One is a BIOS and another one is a UEFI. UEFI is much advanced. Uh, that's what I'm using. Uh, if you do not have a UEFI, then this video is not for you. I specifically making this video for UEFI and a UEFI is the future which has already arrived now. Everyone has to follow the UEFI. So system is still booting as you can see. Uh, by the way, this Arc Linux is systemd based. As we all know, systemd is here to replace the init script. So it's starting the login screen now. And as I was saying, uh, this is a live image. That means the moment I we will finish the booting, we'll get the prompt. As you can see, we directly got the prompt here. As you can see on my screen, the font size is very tiny. It's very small. You won't be uh, able to recognize it the way I expect you to. So what I will do, I will use a SSH shell here basically i will use my windows host operating system shell which is a power shell and i will ssh into it so before that i need to check whether it has a internet connection yes it does have a network connectivity let me check the ip address which it has received which is 192.168.102.128 is the ip address to get advantage of a SSH, I need to do two things. First of all, set the password to our current user because without having a password, you cannot log in through the SSH. So I said, just set the password. The live CD does not have a default root password set. That's the reason you have to set it. I just give a random password. Next thing which you need to do is start the SSHD service. If you are aware about the systemd, this is how you start the service in systemd, systemctl start sshd dot service so i just started the sshd service so we all set basically to start our shell so let me just go back and you can see that this is my host operating system which is windows 10 through windows 10 i am logging in into our arc linux which is our vmware guest operating system we have booted with the live cd of art linux and our vmware guest operating system is has a uefi firmware into it so let's proceed uh, as you can see i need to delete my ssh keys i just deleted them let's see now yes as you can see now i am able to log in and we got the prompt all set now the first thing which we need to do which is very obvious is to check whether this system is a uefi or a bios based system so to check that you can use this command which is called as efi boot mgr hyphen v you can use a switch and it will tell you if you give if you get something like this output that means your system is a uefi based system if you are getting an error message by saying for example the efi variables are missing that means you have a bios based system then this video is not applicable to you because the bootloader specifically the grub bootloader we will be installing on a uefi partition not on the bios way so just to give a summary of it, you have to have a separate VFAT partition for a UEFI system. So the booting sequence of a UEFI is different. Okay. 
so that's how it is so this is a uefi based system if you want to get information as a bit a brief of it it's like boot current is 001 that means we booted with this option which is boot 001 which is vmware virtual id cd round drive obviously we booted with the uh, the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the CD-ROM drive. Next, the boot order you can see. First, we'll go to the fourth option that is Grub uh, UEFI. Next one is triple zero, the first option. Then the second option which we have ch with, through which we have booted. Then 002, which is a EFI network through network, or 003, which is uh, a UEFI shell. So if you boot with this option, it's as good as using your bash shell. It will give you a shell and that shell will be will be similar to your uh, normal bash shell and you'll be you will be able to use uh, uh, LS, MKDR like commands to that shell. Or you can choose a bootloader from there like grubx64.efi like, like file you can choose and you can boot from there. So if you booted with the second option which is ISO image which you have downloaded from the internet. So that's it. Now the first thing after all of this, the first thing what we need to do is to create a partition partition. So we need to create three partitions. OK, before creating a partition, we have to know our hard disk name. So let's see what is the hard disk name. The F disk is the command which can help you in this. So the moment I fire F disk hyphen L, it tells me that I have this hard disk called as slash the SDA. SDA is the hard disk which is attached to my system. It is a 12 GB in size next it has a three partitions to it so obviously i have to delete these partitions and on that i need to create our own partition layout so command is fdis slash dev sda so i need to delete everything so let me delete everything this first partition i deleted then this is the second partition i deleted and this is the third partition deleted so all the partitions i have deleted along with that let me use an option called as g let me use option called as G as you can see it here, which is a create a new empty GPT partition table. So as I explained it, we are using a UEFI based system. So it is always recommended to use a GPT partition table. If it would have been a BIOS based system, I would have used a DOS partition table. Okay, so just to have an idea of it, UEFI and GPT is the best combination, but UEFI and DOS partition table is not the best combination. Then BIOS and DOS is the best combination, but whereas BIOS and GPT, GPT partition table is not the best combination. It does not mean it, mean it won't work. It will work, but it's very painful. Okay, it might fail and you will never know what exactly uh, is going wrong. So we're going to choose a GPT partition table. So let me choose a hyphen G option. So my entire disk will be formatted with the GPT partition table. That means it won't be having the primary and secondary and master boot record like things. It won't be there like four primary partition tables and that stuff won't be there. We'll be using a GPT, which will by default give me 128 partitions, which you can increase. There is no limit to it. By default, it will give me 128 partition. That's the feature of a GPT. So with all of this, let me save the configuration W to save the configuration. I need to use a part probe. Ideally, once you change anything to your hard disk or hardware, ideally you should reboot the system so that you are at the time of boot kernel will recognize those changes which you have just made. I'm not interested in the booting. So I can use a trick, which is a part probe. So it will force the kernel to go back and reread the changes which has taken place into the SDA hard disk. That's the command is. Okay. So if I one more time, if I hit the command called as fdisk slash dev SDA, as you can see, if I do the print, I don't have any partition. I have a SDA hard disk, 12 GB completely free, which is a GPT partition. It is formatted with the GPT partition table. So now let's create the partition tables, uh, partitions. So I need to create a partition. What the, the basic partition will be our root file system, obviously. And I'll give the maximum space to it. So I will give the space, um, let's say um, 11 GB. I'll give this place as a 11 GB to my root file system. So SDA1, which we just created, as you can see in the print, it is SDA1, which is 11 GB in size. And I will assign this SDA1 partition to our root file system. OK, now the second partition I will create. Now, this is very interesting. Second partition, which I am creating now, I will create it of a 200 MB in size. 
as you can see two partitions we have created so the sda1 is for our root file system and sda2 will be our vfat file system and that vfat file system is called as esp partition so uefi is an organization which regulates or governs the uefi specification as per the uefi specification whichever operating system you are whichever operating system vendor you are maybe you are red hat maybe you are art linux debian ubuntu microsoft macintosh apple computers or bsd or unix whichever operating system vendor you are you have to follow the uefi specification and as per the uefi specification you cannot install your bootloader anywhere on your disk you have to install it on a specific location that location is called as esp partition stands for EFI system partition which should be minimum 200 MB in size and the file system should be VFAT. Now why VFAT? Because VFAT is accessible or mountable by every other operating system vendor. If you choose for example NTFS, NTFS is a property of Windows so obviously other operating system vendors will not be able to mount it and you will not be able to use or see the contents of that partition. So that's the reason it has to be uh, a VFAT partition and your bootloader has to be installed inside that ESP. Uh, since the topic has came up about the booting, booting is my favorite topic so let me give a background of it. Once you install a bootloader, earlier you used to get uh, you used to install a bootloader at two locations that is one is your MBR, another one is your slash boot grub. That's the two locations where you used to get used to install the bootloader. Now the location has been changed. Now the install location will not be your MBR, rather it will be the ESP partition and the slash boot. Okay, we'll talk about it in some time. Yeah, so we have created a two partition. I need to create a third partition, which is optional. And that will be, I'll give the full space, whichever space is remained, I'll give, which is 823 MB. I'll give it to third partition. I just saved all of that. And now if I do F this, I have three partitions, one, two, and three. Okay, so let me one more time fire a command part pro you can pre keep pressing the tab it will complete the command from you for you dev sda sda is the command let me save it and as you can see it has it is actually re, uh, read the changes and everything into it okay 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 there's no job pending into it I hope uh, everything is clear so far. Now let's move next and uh, let me fire a command called as lsblk. As you can see, SDA 1, 2 and 3, three partitions we have created. We haven't created any file system into it yet. So let's create them mkfs.ext4 slash dev sda1. So our first partition, which was 11 GB in size, I'm formatting it. Uh, with the ext4 you can choose any other linux file system as well but i will choose ext4 so just created a file system on sda1 the same way we have to create a file system on sda2 but it won't be ext4 as i explained it has to be vfat because sda2 is a esp partition for us so i just created that and the third one is swap partition which is optional it is not necessary to create the swap partition but if you have it it's always good to use that partition slash dev sda3 we created that all right now we have to mount it to the slash dev sda1 to the slash mnt that is where i have mounted it Okay, so that means my MNT, whenever I will do LS MNT, it will go to the SDA1. Next, I need to create one directory structure which is inside MNT boot EFI. This is to mount our ESP partition which is SDA2. And there, that is where I will mount my SDA2 slash MNT boot EFI. That's how it is. Now, if I do DF-H, as you can see, SDA1 is your 11 GB mounted under MNT. This we will make as our root file system. And this is where we will install our bootloader or this is where our ESP is mounted. Okay, 
to give you a block diagram this is what we have done so far this is our sda hard disk we have done so far i hope my handwriting is readable enough because i got my own font so it's difficult sometimes to read so this is what our hard disk is which is sda we created three partitions sda 1 2 and 3 the bigger one we are assigning we assign we are mounted it under mnt this is where we will make our partition we will make as our root file system this one is our uh, boot efi and third one is our swap this is the layout we have created so far clear all right let's move next now we are all set to command called as packstrap so command name is packstrap so this is actually not a command packstrap is not really a command this is actually a custom script which is provided with the live cd of arch linux once we install arch linux once you install and you boot with that installed arch linux you won't find a packstrap uh, binary into it because it's not really a command this the purpose of packstrap is to first of all install the packages all the packages will be installed it will take two inputs first input will be where to install the packages obviously we will install the packages at the slash mnt which we just created 11 gb because that is what we are planning to be our root file system so that's first input second what all all packages has to be installed this is the second input so what exactly packstrap does packstrap is will install the packages first of all but before installing the packages it will first of all mount the virtual file systems like proc sys dev file system tmpfs like file systems it will install those it will mount those file system virtual file systems inside your mnt once the virtual file system has been mounted it will ch root into it that's called as ch root changing the root so as of now we booted with our with our uh, live cd now if i check my pwd and if i just check my ls root file system so this root file system belongs to the iso image of our live cd okay but we want to create our own root file system which is a mnt right so what we will be doing we will be taking advantage of something called as ch root so once we booted this is how we have booted this is our live image this is what our live image environment this is where our root file system is as of now then we have created a mnt directory into it so we will ch root into that mnt directory once you ch root into the mnt directory now the bash will jump from this location to this mnt directory and it will consider mnt as your root file system now it cannot escape so that's what the jail for the bash now once you exit from that environment it will move back to the original live system now again the forward slash is of your live system once you again ch root into mnt it will jump from this environment to the new environment and mnt becomes which is ours mnt becomes the root file system so packstrap will do all of this packstrap will ch root packstrap will before ch root will mount the root uh, uh, virtual file system proc sys and all kind of file systems it will mount dev file system then it will ch root into it and then it will start installing the packages whichever we have told him to install okay if you are not sure about the ch root and how does it exactly work then uh, on my channel i have already created one uh, uh, video series on how to make your own operating system there are six videos to it in one of the video i explained thoroughly how exactly ch root environment works what exactly changing the root means so you go back in one of the video you will find that ch root i explained with the block diagram and everything on the whiteboard so you watch that video come back and then continue okay so i hope now packstrap command is complete so packstrap basically reduces your time a packstrap custom script they wouldn't have provided then we supposed to mount the virtual file systems one by one all the virtual file system proxies dev and all and all tmfs fs and all and all then ch root and then start installing the packages with the help of pacman to reduce our workload they have provided a packstrap script so you can check that script as well so where is packstrap let's check it's at slash usr bin 
fax tab. So as you can see, this is a custom script which mounts the root file system and everything. Okay. So the command packstrap hyphen mnt that means where to chroot and where to install the packages that is mnt is the location where we have to install the packages and remember mnt is our slash dev sda1 which is our 11 gb okay and then uh, the packages which we want to install at the start is base let's hit the enter now it will contact the art linux server and from there it will start downloading the packages what all packages it will download the packages those are grouped under the base name repository so base is a group of packages what all those packages those are all core packages which are very much necessary to boot your operating system or install the operating system this is th these packages will be base or platform to your art linux once you install the base on top of that you can install the other customized packages whichever you want but base has to be there so base packages will be like for example linux your linux kernel then the core utils find utils like packages which every linux distribution needs those all packages will be installed through this base url so uh, this is what it is doing now <clears throat> let's for let, let's wait for a while and it's almost complete as you can see there are almost 50 packages it is going to install as you can see the bash obviously there has to be a bash to have to provide a shell to the user bzip archive next is core utils which provides the ls mkdr cat then all of those files the basic binaries it provides basic commands next is script setup for the cryptography purpose next is device mapper if, in case if you want to use lvm then device mapper is the dependency dm devices has to be there next one is dhcpd dhcp has to be there without that you won't get ip address next is diff utils which provides the diff binary the diff binary which you command which you use this provided by the diff utils next one is e2fs procs which provides the fsck like binary which checks the file system next one is a file which is a file binary it provides which reads the metadata of that particular file next one is find utils the find command or find binary it provides next is gawk the advanced awk that it provides we all know the awk and said like commands next is gcc libs which is not really providing a gcc a compiler it is basically providing only the libraries which are necessary for the gcc okay next is get text next one is glibc that means glibc is a gnu libraries all the shared libraries whichever are necessary for our operating system those all will be provided by the glibc one of the uh, most famous and the important library will be libc.so i mean you want to run any of c program then you have to have that libc.so dot so uh, you can consider you can call it as a shared object in windows it's called as dot dll dynamic link libraries in linux is called as dot so so those all so's will be provided by glibc it will be installed under slash usr lib directory lib or lib 64 next one is grep we all know the grep command gzip again archive i need details which will be providing if config arp root like commands next one is ip root a root command it will provide ip utils i'm not sure what exactly it is next is less less is the basic command next is linux linux is the actual kernel that means the vm line z file which will be at the slash boot directory that will be provided by the uh, this base uh, group as well linux linux has a dependency called as linux firmware that means if you want to install a linux binary the kernel main if you want to install then you have to have a linux firmware as well next is log rotate that means uh, operating system maintains the logs into the var log directory inside var log you will have a messages file so th those files will be rotated every day uh, so that thing will be uh, controlled by the log rotate command next is you have a lvm2 in case if you want to use a logical volume managers you have to have a lvm2 next is man pages it will be providing man database man pages next you have a 30 packages mdadm that is what exactly mdadm means uh, if in case if you want to configure a red device software read i mean then you have to have that package next is nano is our editor favorite editor next is netctl i'm not sure next is pacman is the package manager in linux or uh, in case of red hat or in case of fedora in case of centos you use rpm package database in case of 
Debian based operating system like Debian or Ubuntu use AppGate. Here in Arc, you use a Pacman. Pacman stands for Package Manager. It installs the packages for you. Next is PCI Utils, uh, which provides the LSPCI like commands. Next is Perl, is the Perl uh, language, the Perl compiler. Next is Proc CPSNG. I believe uh, I'm not sure about this, so I shouldn't. PSMISC, I believe it provides the PS top like commands. Next is Riser FS Procs, SNL, I'm not sure. SID is the again an editor. Uh, said and awk next is shadow which provides the slash etc shadow file you have to have a password right so that will be provided sys fs utils system d obviously you have to have a system d because this these days system d is the main uh, process after the kernel which controls everything then you have a tar for the archiving purpose after the tar you have text info usb utils for the usb purpose then you have util linux all the basic commands like fdisk and all will be provided by the util linux next is vi editor you have to have a vi nano and vi are the default two editors provided by the base packages next one is which which we just used where is which like commands tells you where exactly that binary is and the last one is xfs procs in case if you are using a xfs file system we are not using we are using uh, uh, like ext4 file system fat file system but in case if you are ready to use xfs then this package will help you in that so these are the packages will be provided by the base package and these all packages will be installed into the mnt directory once we install the this base packages we will go to the next uh, we will be installing uh, another set of packages that's called as base devil those packages we need ideally we don't need a base devil so base devil is for the development purpose it will be providing you a gcc compiler then linux headers that means all that uh, dot header files which you have math dot h stdio dot h dot h and all basically a api provided by the uh, by the kernel is given by the linux header so those like packages will be installing so these all packages ideally we don't need it but in case you want to do some development on it so i don't want to do a development on this artliness which i'm building but i want to install a vmware tools because this is a vmware i'm installing everything inside a vmware so without vmware tools i won't be able to use my system at the, the at the highest level that means the resolution the highest resolution since my system supports the 4k i won't be able to use the 4k configurations and all the screen will be very tiny i can't really copy and paste from my host or within the guest i won't be able to do that so i have to install vmware tools for that i have to have these packages the base devil the development packages that's the reason okay so that packages will be installing next is core utils as you can see it installing the core utils so it's going to take some time or list fast forward install the base packages as you can see now next is along with base as i said we want to install the base devil group of packages as well as usual again it will connect to the uh, particular server so we start installing as you can see the first package is autoconf use for the for providing the configuration files and a configure like commands you remember configure make make install like commands those are provided by the autoconf atomake and all the next is bin utils which provides the a as and ld as is assembler whereas ld is a loader which you need while compiling a program only gcc won't help you gcc will give uh, the gcc will convert your c program into uh, assembly it will check the uh, compile uh, it will compile the program it will check the syntactic errors and everything and everything is right it will give it to the uh, convert it to the assembly and it will given to the binutils binutils as now as will convert that into a binary 
that binary will given to bin utils provided ld uh, uh, ld binary now that ld binary will convert your program or the given object uh, binary into operating system specific binary that's how it goes next is bin utils after that we have a bison then fake root file as we all know find utils flex gawk those are already installed it won't install them or it will simply reinstall them next is gcc we already installed get text we already installed grep graph i already installed gzip we are, i hope we have installed already then we have lib tool then m4 we haven't installed it's a macro processor then make command pacman we already installed patch to patching purpose it patches the then next is pkg conf then then we have said sudo systemd textinfo util linux and which most of our we have already installed so as you can see we have already installed the base devil group of packages now it is creating a initramfs which will be inside a slash boot directory just creating that <coughs> so inside slash boot we will find uh, a linux which is our actual kernel along with that we'll find the actual kernels corresponding uh, in interface file the interface will have the modules into it uh, the modules which are necessary to mount the root file system only those modules will be available there when i say modules it will have a modules like object files it will be having dot ko object files and uh, some libraries will also be there obviously dot so files and some uh, binaries which are necessary to mount the root file system so basically whatever you need to mount the root file system whatever kernel needs to mount the root file system all those binaries all those libraries binaries modules will be provided by the initramfs that's what it is creating all right so it has installed everything as you can see image generating so it, it has completed all the transactions and base devil group of packages also has been installed all good so we are all set to talk about the etc fs tab now so we need one uh, file while booting i mean who mounts the root file system it's the kernel who mounts the root file system uh, but at, along with the root file system you need some other supportive file systems as well for example you need in our case you need a boot efi in in your case might be slash usr has a separate mount point and var has a separate mount point so kernel will not mount these uh, supportive file system at the time of boot so for that you have to have a etcfs tab file right so obviously now if i check my cat etcfs tab obviously it will be empty or if i no sorry i we have to check the etcfs tab so we check that it's empty so what they have done they have created given one script again so gen fs tab is not again a command it's a script custom script provided by the arc linux iso image live dvd it won't be available once you boot with the installed operating system so gen fs tab name itself suggests will create a fs tab for you and you need to specify like where is Uh, from where actually it should get the information about the your mount point so we have mounted everything under mnt when i say everything that means our root file system along with root file system uh, our uh, boot efi is also mounted under mnt so as you can see it found two uh, structure which is sda1 and sda2 it failed to find our swap i don't know why let me just Uh, on yeah we haven't enabled our swap which was slash dev sta three okay now see now you can see now sda three also has been detected okay so all good so this is what we need to create so gen fs tab then hyphen u you can use for the uid where you can see it here. it had just give a uh, uh, chosen the name as disk name sda1 sda2 sda3 but these names are not permanent after reboot they might change whichever hard disk whichever device responds first they get the first name so we don't want to uh, make our system can't bootable 
so just use the hyphen u uid which will be unique identification number assigned to it for our mnt and where you have to create this obviously you have to create it at the slash mnt etc fs tab this is where you need to copy all your contents now cat slash mnt etc fs tab has been created and you can see the contents okay so this is our sda1 uid this is sda2 uid this is our sda3 uid and they are mounted here so fs tab also has been created so with all of that now we are ready to use a command called as arc ch root so arc ch root is again a script obviously but the command actual command will be ch root and you have to jump into the mnt as i already explained now let me show you if i exit from here this root if i if from here if i exit now i am into the live cd okay now if i now if i look at my pwd i am in, inside a root and this is my root file system now let me do a arc ch root into mnt check my pwd it's forward slash that means now i am stuck to the mnt mnt becomes my uh, root file system for a bash and if i do ls for forward slash you can see the change so these are all contents belongs to mnt not to the actual root file system the actual root file system forward slash belongs to live cd now we ch rooted into the mnt now our bash which is there on your screen is stuck into the mnt and it is considering mnt as your root file system that's how it is okay now we have to do something which is very boring which is setting up the time zone and all i really get bored with all of this so uh, if i if you look at this local time this is what we need to set so how you can set you have to create one sim link which is ln hyphen sf from usr share then zone info if i'm not right wrong it's zone info then inside zone info i am asian basically asia i'm from india so kolkata is my time zone etc local time so this sim link only we need to create that's it so let me just create that sim link and the sim link has been created now if i check my hyphen etc local time you can see it is pointing to the kolkata that's how it is now i need to create a slash etc host name this file is missing i need to create that so that our system will have a host name so let's create that let me put give a name as a r c h y o g e s h this is the name i want to give and that's it this is how we have created our host name now what you need to do you need to open one file uh, that is called as local gen local generation now why this why we need it uh, so this is basically for locals uh, and what exactly it does it is uh, locals are used by glibc and other local aware programs or libraries for rendering text correctly displaying regional monetary values time date formats and other local specific standards for that reason we have to do it so obviously we'll be using english so just search for en us so that is control w en underscore us we need to search where it is we have found it here one more time w en us oh one more time okay where is it yes now we need to uncomment this these two fonts or these two languages local languages we need to uncomment and you just need to save it so let me just save it which is control uh, o and exit we have saved it once you do that we need to fire a command called as local jane uh, which will read this file local jane this configuration file it will read and will take action accordingly all right going next we need to just do this as i said this is very boring thing and i also don't like it much we have to just export this variable so let me just quickly export it and we are done we are done 
and now the most interesting part that is installing our bootloader once we install a bootloader we are ready to reboot our system and we will have our command line based uh, arch linux operating system in front of us okay so obviously we have to install a packages for that and the pacman is the package manager we have to use there we use earlier packstrap because packstrap will help us to go and chroot by mounting the virtual file system and everything now here we are already inside the chroot so we can directly use a pack manager which is a package manager so as i explained earlier in red hat you use rpm or yum in fedora also the same in debian based operator to use app gate and all here you use a pacman hyphen s to install the particular packages what are all packages you need to install you need to install obviously the bootloader grub next is efi boot mgr when we first booted through our iso this is the first command which i hit which is efi boot mgr that is provided by this package next is dos uh, fs tools is not necessary to install it's really not necessary to install next is os prober now this is quite interesting this os prober this particular package uh, helps uh, uh, grub bootloader to find out the operating systems those are non linux based like unix operating system or windows based operating system those like operating it will it will help to find those operating this particular package and, and then next is m tools hit the enter and these packages will be installed this is around 6 mb for the download after installation it will be 30 mb okay so uh, booting is my favorite topic uh, i'm thinking to uh, make another video series only on how really operating system boots so not only linux it's linux windows then your unix macintosh every operating system right from your kernel right from your firmware which is your uefi then what happens then how shell works then your kernel then your initram fs then your system d then your fs tab and then your login screen and what exactly all of that i really want to explain in one of the video series i will explain that i will make a video series but it will take some time but stay tuned that video series is also coming up so we install the packages now but that is not enough let's see what exactly all these packages are providing now if i simply check hyphen q to query l to list and the grub and just less it you can see that these are the files provided by the grub so what grub package has provided you can see grub install so basically grub bootloader has provided a grub install binary it hasn't installed the grub yet into our boot efi it hasn't installed that's the purpose of the grub package okay now for example if i do os prober let's see os prober what exactly it does as you can see it provided a os prober named binary which will help bootloader to find out the non linux based operating system and then you can put it into the your grub.cfg file such like things will be provided now all right now let's install the actual grub and the command will be grub install obviously we installed grub package first that's the reason now we have a grub install command next we are installing as a target as x86 64 which is efi so we're installing it for 64-bit architecture so what we are telling grub install command uh, hey grub install command you install the uefi based grub binary for a 64-bit system that's what it's gonna do the then the id it is only for the uefi and the recheck if you have a, a map file ready delete it and you recreate it that's what it is doing so grub install it is doing its task now if i do slash boot you can see that you have a efi and grub so these files are already provided this is our provided by the linux package this is our we have seen that while creating uh, while installing a linux kernel it created this initram fs then you have grub and efi directories so let me go into the grub directory it has some files into it now if i go to the efi these are the files provided by the grub package okay which we installed next if i go to the boot efi you can see there is a efi directory and this file has been provided by the particular package that's how it is now this is the package which will this is the file which will be used to boot your uefi based operating system now next is only one thing is remained that is creating your grub configuration file mk config hyphen o and the location will be slash boot grub uh, grub uh, uh, grub dot cfg remember this is a grub 2 okay the one which you are creating is a grub 2 so you have to manually create the configuration file you cannot really with the grub one you used to create manually with the grub uh, 
to you can't basically you can but you should not so it will create the file grub configuration file and you, as you can see it found the actual kernel it found the initramfs it will make the proper credit into the grub.cfg in case if you want to see those files uh, grub.cfg uh, here it is okay here it is that's how it is it said just created that and these are the entries of it all right and we are done with our command line uh, arc linux installation i hope you enjoyed it so let's reboot it arc linux is ama amazing so let me reboot it from here okay so let's reboot as you can see it has been rebooted and that's our arc linux grub load mino so from where it is coming from boot efi it is coming so it's the bootloader who is going into the boot uh, directory inside grub directory reading the grub.cfg file which we just created from there it is looking at what all entries are entries are linux and initramfs and it is reading those that file and putting it in front of you the moment you hit the enter it will go to the slash boot copy the linux copy the initramfs and that's done with the bootloader and a bootloader will go away then kernel will take care of everything the kernel will eventually reach up to the etc fs tab file from there it will see what all has to be mounted it will mount that and eventually it will give it a control to the system d system will call the login service and you will get the login prompt that's our login prompt that's what we have received so let me just quickly log in all right now what needs to be done you have to set the password first of all so just give a simple password all right now what we need to do is we have to add one user okay a basic user we need to add so let me just quickly try to log in. I am not able to log in. There is a reason behind it, and that is the SSHG service is not running. So that time it was a live CD. Now this is our Arc Linux. So obviously the SSHD you know, all the settings which we have done are all gone. So for that we need to first of all uh, see whether we have IP address. Oh no, we don't have IP address. So for that we have to run the DHCP CD. Now let's see yes here the first time we got the ip address now only ip address won't help us what we need to do we have to install one package called as bash we we received a bash not bash the bash completion so whenever you hit the tab it will keep completing the commands for you so it will save your time so that's the first package which we need to install once you do that we have to install open ssh as well because i want to ssh into it that time inside a live cd the ssh was available but in our case when we installed open ssh we haven't installed so that's what i have installed once you done with that what we need to do nano slash etc and you need to go to this location sshd config once you go there there you will find I know this is very small in size. Okay, here it is. So what I need to do, I need to simply remove this and I need to put it here as yes. So by default, a root file, a root user cannot log in through SSH due to security reasons because a middleman can look at the root password and it can compromise your entire security or entire system. So it's by default disabled. Here I'm saying let's through the SSH also allow root user to log in. All right, so just save everything, exit. Now we are all set to log in as a root user. So one thing remain that is system CTL obviously start sshd dot dot service all set and only that won't work it has to be permanent so we need to obviously enable it all right now let's go back to 
this screen now let's try to log in obviously uh, I need to delete uh, my SSH okay not the F I need to use the R okay all right now we are all set now we can see the nice bigger font okay now with all that we need to create one user so let me create one user that is a command is user add obviously then user add after user add we have to specify some options hyphen m so that it will get the uh, its own home directory with the hyphen m user will get the home directory so we are creating a arc user okay and arc should get a home directory that's the reason hyphen m it should get it its default users as a group that is also there hyphen g a secondary group should be wheel that is why because you have we have to have a pseudo uh, uh, we want to make this you we want to give a root access or the pseudo access to this user that's the reason wheel who whichever user is a part of this group has a, a pseudo access that's the reason secondary so users hyphen g is this users is the primary group and this wheel is a secondary group and arc is the our user then it has to receive a shell as well so as soon as this user will log in it used to uh, system should give him a shell that's how the user arc will be added the user arc has been added let me set up a password for this user red hat red hat all right now what we need to do we need to do a vi sudo and add the arc username into it so let's go to that line here it is you can see all right a r c h all so basically we are giving all the permissions whichever root user has to the arc user as well this is self-explanatory all right so now save it and exit so our arc user becomes a sudo user all right good so next is we have to install one command which is obviously sudo sudo has to be there otherwise how will you use a uh, user as a sudo sudo the moment you use it will ask for a username and all that's all and we are almost done with our command line interface now this is what our os looks like there's nothing fancy i understand there's nothing into it it's very common basic command line interface operating system but it does had has a gcc in everything we haven't provided the file system name uh, file name to compile as reason it has a compiler it has a perl compiler a gcc compiler you can do some development with it it's a basic operating system but we won't stop here we want to we want to install a gui also into it so let's move next and install the gui to install the gui the first thing what we need to do is install one package pacman hyphen s which is x o r g a p p s this is the package which we need to install as you can see it provides both the repo some of the packages provide both the repositories which is nvidia and libgl and midi i will choose the default one the first one because i don't have nvidia here what i am using is a vmware so it has its own vmware graphics card so it's gonna it's it's it is installing all these packages so basically you have uh, hardware which is your graphics card that will be communicating with the your driver driver will communicate with xorg which you are installing now xorg the xorg will communicate with the x uh, protocol and then x protocol will communicate with your uh, desktop whichever you are installing maybe genome maybe mate maybe unity whichever you have uh, we, we we will be installing a cinnamon so it will communicate with the cinnamon now cinnamon will con con communicate with the shell or the apps whichever you are using 
and then you will be able to see the GUI. That's how it is. So it's other way. You communicate with the apps. App will communicate with your desktop, which is Cinnamon in our case. Cinnamon will communicate with the X server protocol. Protocol will communicate with the actual X server. X server will communicate with the driver. Driver will communicate with the actual hardware, which is our graphics card. That's the list. This all guys has done amazing work. Amazing work. We are able to use all those facilities because people have spent their you know their time their hard earned money into all creating the entire stack that's the reason today we are able to install the linux that's the reason we are able to install it with the gui and all it's amazing so it is installing it's going to take some time so let's fast forward All right, so we installed the first set of XORG packages. Now we need to install some some of the kits of the XORG, which is this, which is XORG server, Xenet, uh, Mesa we have already installed, so not necessary. XORG TWM, the clock and all, so very basic ones. It's hardly three MB in size, so let's install it. All right, so we installed this. Now the next package which we are installing is very much necessary. That is Linux, H -E -D -R, Linux headers. Let's install it. So this is the one which provides the header files, the .h files. When you do the programming in C, you include the header files. Those are all provided by the Linux headers. Okay, like math.h and the include.h. I believe the default location of these files will be slash usr include that's where they will be installed these are necessary to uh, to install the uh, rest of the gui packages also it is necessary to uh, make our uh, i mean install the vmware tools it is necessary all right so we installed this now we need to check what exactly uh, drivers we need for our graphics card obviously i'm using vmware so i will be having a vmware related hardware so let me just check that what hardware i have specifically as you can see it's a vmware svga2 adapter so for that we have one driver provided by the arc people that is this xf xf86 video vmware that's the driver which is available so let me just quickly install it it is hardly it's not even one mb in size we installed it and all done we installed the xorg we installed the vmware specific uh, uh, graphics card driver we installed almost everything to get us a basic gui so let me go to my arc linux installation and we have to fire a command called as startx and hit the enter and that's our basic gui it will take some time hold on yeah there it is there it is it's a basic gui we have received now this is not enough right the obvious is not enough this is a very basic gui now we haven't installed a desktop yet now next what we need to do install a desktop and obviously we will be choosing a cinnamon so let's go next clear all of this and install our favorite my favorite cinnamon and the file browser will be nemo and this is huge in size it's gonna take a long time and I will quickly this is a cinnamon desktop this is my favorite why this is favorite because it's highly customizable you can customize like anything in the with the cinnamon that's the reason it's my favorite on my day to day work I use a fedora there also use a cinnamon I prefer cinnamon all the time it's very good I like the cinnamon the way the they have designed it it's very clean it's very calm clean uh, there's no fancy stuff into it it's very it's very minimal but minimal with the it has the proper GUI into it. The color combination, the way they have used and all. I like it. So Cinnamon is my all-time favorite. Not necessary US as well. But 
is my favorite so it's going to take some time so let's quickly fast forward it All right, so we have installed the Cinnamon and the file manager, which is Nemo. Next, what we have to do? Nothing. We have to start the Cinnamon. So let me go to my Arch Linux and let's start the Cinnamon session and hit the Enter. It's going to take some time, but the wait will be worth. Also, I know the still the font size is very low. I know that part. We will take care of it as well. Come on, Cinnamon. And here you go. This is what the basic Cinnamon looks like. As you can see it here, it's clearly in front of you. I understand there is no proper graphics, there is no good graphics and all. It's very basic, but still, this is our file manager Nemo, which we installed. This is called as Nemo. And this is this, the, you can see it, everything, all the application, whichever we have installed so far and everything is here. Okay. Now next is uh, install the GDM, which is Genome Display Manager. That will help us as soon as you reboot the system, system D will call the login screen and the login will call the GDM, which will give us, will start the GUI by its own. Otherwise, every time we have to log in, then start X and then cinnamon session, every time we have to do, we are not interested in doing that. It should start automatically. For that, we need to install another package, which is GDM, which will be again a kind of uh, heavy package, which is gonna take time. So we'll just quickly let me install it. That's the GDM, which is around 50 MB in size for the download. And after installation, it will be 283 MB. And once I install the GDM, as I said, by default, it will start the uh, server X, the XORG, as well as the cinnamon. And it will help us, you know, to start the GUI by its own. Next, once I do that, next thing what I will do, I will start the GDM and uh, I'll make it permanent through the system CTL, through the system D's help. And I guess then our GUI will be ready. The basic GUI, not the fancy one, the basic GUI. Then we will go after our VMware, installing the VMware tools. For that we will go. All right, so we installed it. Now let me quickly install one more package, which is Net Tools. This is this is very important package. Why you will come to know quick, uh, soon. So let me we just installed it. So let me show you uh, what exactly this package and what it does. Uh, Net Tools. And if I just do this, you can see it provides the ARP, if config, IP address, and like commands it provides. So it is a very important package, which is necessary while installing the VMware tools. That's what it does. So now what? Now let me just systemctl and enable the GDM. So that at the moment reboot, it will be enabled. Now what I need to do, I need to go here. Uh, and I need to reboot the system or better way I will shut down the system next part is next part is installing uh, VMware tools so let me hit the shut it down all right so as you can see we have shut it down all right so what we need to do now as we all know that we have rebooted the system and uh, not rebooted we have shut down the system and uh, this is what our art linux is so what i'll do i'll simply go here and i will start using the physical drive i don't need iso image now because we have to use install a vmware tools 
um, as you must be knowing to install a VMware tools, um, you need to insert one CD or, D CD or DVD which is provided by the VMware people. So how you will insert that is you simply start your operating system. So let me just start my our operating system. This is file system check. It is checking the file system integrity. It is checking the SDA1, which is clean. And since we enabled the GDM, ideally the GDM, the login screen should give us the GUI, as you can see it here. And the, our user, which is ARC. Let me just put on a password and choose a cinnamon as my desktop and sign in. That's our cinnamon desktop for an ARC user. Going next. Now what we need to do, we have to simply go to the this page, reinstall VMware tools. Just simply click on this. Yes, as you can see, it has been mounted. Now let's go back to our SSH. That's bad. Uh, let me see what has happened. So let me just quickly open a terminal here. Uh, and let me become a root user. I know the font size is very less. And we do not have this. So let me DHCP CD and done. I don't know why DHCP did not start by its own. Service. And now let's see. Did we get IP address? Yes, we have a IP address. Now let me try one more time. And as you can see, we're able to log in. Great. So now what we need to do, we need to go to the run media. This is where the, uh, the CD-ROM has been mounted. Run media. And this is where it has been mounted. As you can see, this is it. So we need to untar this. Uh, this is where the VMware tools is. So we need to untar this. So what I'll do, I'll simply first of all, since this is CD-ROM, I need to copy to home and copy in arc, arc users. desktop okay it must have copied now um, let me show you yes it has been copied here so let's extract it home arc desktop and tar hyphen xvf to extract the VMware tools so the particular uh, Tar, uh, tar for tarball we are extracted as you can see it has been extracted let me go to the vmware tools directory you can see that here it has been extracted here it is it has been extracted okay so we are inside the same directory and we need to simply run this file vmware install.pl so this Perl file this is what we need to run it's just saying where is our binary files so obviously inside usr bin i'm saying yes then contains the init rates now this is a problem now arc linux is obviously system d but vmware tools is still going back to the i don't know why but still it is stuck with the init vmware if you are watching this please i mean everyone is using a system d these days and your latest vmware tools is still wants uh, rc file init file which is pretty bad so obviously this will fail because we don't have in it so we have to create so let me cancel it we have to create one fake init directories we need to create so let me quickly create the fake directories rc.0 rc.1234567 this directory will be created inside etc init.d under that so if i go etc init.d init.d 
this is where this directory has been created now this is what you need to do now again let me run this same strategy user bin now i'm saying yes there it is available it's saying it should i install it said yes whereas our daemon files obviously usr has been where libraries usr lib yes and as long as currently this program is going to create the file yes please create the file and library files yes common agent you install i don't documentation usr share doc i don't mind and what is the first time you are installing so it will start another program called as vmware config tools.pl so let's start it's going to take some time it is basically configuring our uh, device it's here still initializing all right <clears throat> hopefully it will not hopefully it will enhance our gui and that's a warning message but don't worry we can ignore it uh, that uh, the warning message says this particular script could not find a mknet id or update in it rfs and cannot remake the init id file even if you don't remake the init id file that's fine ideally uh, re uh, making or regenerating the init rfs is necessary but at our level because we are just creating a desktop based art linux operating system it's not really necessary all right so if you want you can manually do it that's it okay now the main fun part and that is this now we have to reboot the system so let me quickly reboot the system through systemd also you can reboot the system hit the enter it has been rebooted where is here it is started booting back it's going to take some time because it will be checking the uh, file in file system integrity of our root file system which is sda1 which is 11 gb in size so it's going to take some time all right our arc still we don't have a good gui that's fine it will come right away so let me sign in all right so let me re-log in this way again let me delete whatever we have created in arc users desktop all right we deleted everything all right so now what we need to do is simply we have to go to the etc in it dot d rc 6 dot d and we have to start okay one two three go started and come back to our ah there you go now we have full screen now we have full screen and this is how it looks now that's the importance of vmware tools now in 4k we will be able to check these settings and all so it still looks very boring very basic don't worry next 15 to 20 minutes and this will start looking amazing we so far installed a command line interface then we installed xorg server then we installed cinnamon then we customized it a bit but we haven't customized it a lot that's what we're gonna do now that is a customization cinnamon customization that's what we're gonna do okay all right so vmware uh, part is done vmware tools part is done let me quickly start the network network Oh, sorry start the network manager dot service and along with that i have to enable it as well okay i have to enable it as well network manager has to be there right so that we will have a gui with us all right so now what now we have to install some packages which is these are the basic packages which we need to install let me start installing these packages and then we will talk about it these are the package let me start so the first package which we are installing is liber office which is obviously our office or uh, if we are planning it as a desktop operating system so obviously it has to have office so liber office is the default choice for all 
just to give a background LibreOffice was created initially by Sun Microsystem now Sun Microsystem is with the Oracle uh, but LibreOffice still works as an independent um, or uh, explicit unit I will say and uh, LibreOffice that's what we are installing after LibreOffice what we are installing is Firefox we have to have a Firefox without Firefox what kind of desktop operating system it will be I'm not a Chrome fan as such I still prefer Firefox uh, the new generation Firefox is very lightweight the only problem is flash due to some reasons they are, they are, there are some serious reasons security reasons that's the reason they stopped by default supporting the flash plugins but still uh, for a desktop operating system it's a bad idea so that's the reason after Firefox if you see after Firefox we are installing a flash plugin, plugin as well that's what we are installing after that we are installing VLC media player the beauty is VLC media player is directly available into the Arc Linux repositories that's the beauty so VLC media player has to be there right as a, being a desktop operating system the the default choice of a media player is always a uh, is always a VLC that's my favorite so VLC we are installing then we are installing our editor I can install a gedit editor but gedit is very basic so here I'm installing atom atom is kind of a good editor but my personal and favorite one is sublime but sublime is not directly available into the art linux repositories so for that i need to download it compile it and all i need to do a lot of work for that which i'm not really interested so that's the reason i'm installing atom here atom is not the great sublime is the great actually but um, it's better than a g edit that's the reason atom i'm installing and add then m player uh, so VLC normally I use for only for the video purpose if I'm listening to songs mp3s or flag files I simply go with the M player it's a command based player which uh, which you can enjoy uh, it also looks geeky as well that in one window at one side you can uh, it can still play it start playing the uh, music and it shows that you know Verbo's output where like track information and all that looks nice that looks geeky just to get that look i'm installing an m player so these are the basics uh, packages which has to be there on desktop operating steam that's the reason we are installing it's going to take some time because this is a 344 mb in size so i believe with my internet speed is going to take 10 to 15 minutes so let's face uh, fast forward Alright, so we installed the LibreOffice, then we installed VLC, Atom, Firefox, Flash plugin, and the M player. All the necessary packages which are necessary applications which are necessary on a desktop operating system all has been installed. Now let's customize a bit. So here we, we are installing all those packages, those are like dots which are sp sprayed everywhere. These all dots we will be connect we will be will be connecting soon okay stay stay tuned concentrate within next 15 to 20 minutes we'll be connecting all those dots together and we'll be having an amazing operating team in front of us that is art linux all right so what i need to do now since we have installed the firefox so let me just quickly log in and start the firefox okay that's our firefox this is the first time we are starting i want to install some themes for art linux so they have their own uh, web page where they maintain the list of the uh, uh, themes which are available for Arc Linux. So let me just quickly search that themes for Arc Linux. And yeah, here it is. It's the official website. And let me increase the font size. All right, now this must be readable. Uh, you can see this is the list here so the ones which I used in the past and I know those are better so one of them is breeds the deep in is the good definitely will install deep in new mix is the best yeah this is enough so these are the ones we will install uh, hopefully they must have given a 
screenshots no they haven't breeze so that's one breeze we have to install that we will be installing next one is dip in here also they haven't given any screenshots but dip in we will be installing so basically dip in is one operating system uh, they have amazing gui with them so that that theme we will be installing that operating systems and next one is a new mix so installing new mix which is very much amazing which is my one of my favorite so let me quickly close all of this and let me start the uh, our pacman and install the remaining themes which is a breeze new mix gtk theme and dip it let's hit the enter now again this is these are huge packages and it's gonna take a long time okay so let's install them and fast forward all right so we have installed the LibreOffice, firefox vlc flash plugin atom and player the basic applications and after that we installed some things which are breeze numix gtk theme and dip in those are the amazing things okay now the last set of packages okay last set of packages which are very much important and then we are done with packaging and all and then we will just simply go back and set the themes okay that is pacman i would like to give you this uh, you know which is one of the best package which is conky which is a conky along with conky i want you to install the guec is a terminal the way we have a bash and all the same way it's a guec is a terminal then there is a, another terminal that is terminator it's a shell and termino logy these are the so basically guec terminator and terminology are the three shells and the conky and conky manager are the monitoring tools but those are amazing monitoring tools. it will give us that look and feel okay so while it is getting installed meantime we will go back to our uh, screen and we will start customizing it so before i start customizing it let me go to firefox and let's change the wallpaper first of all so let me just quickly get one wallpaper from my favorite website This looks amazing and let me check our installation all right so we installed this we'll start setting up the themes now what you need to do you have to just simply go to the themes here this is where you need to go i'll open one so this is our nemo and these are our themes package so let me go to the windows border first and you can see that new mix we have installed let's see now see the border has been changed it looks much good now much better icons we will change and you will use the breeze icon which is my favorite you see this it has been changed you want something else then we can go use a dip in as well this is dip in then this is breeze dark what else we have dip in dark we have even this one this also looks good or the c1 no. I will choose the best this is my favorite which is this really looks good isn't it see the icons has been changed completely if i go to the settings even now if i go to the setting there also icons has been changed wow it looks stunning guys isn't it it looks stunning now let me quickly go to the controls and let me choose uh the default one i'll choose this one new mix see it looks even better now going to the mouse pointer this is a very basic mouse pointer i'll use the different mount pointer see the pointer has been changed and mm, let's see which one looks good uh, cinnamon we have i'll use dip in dark how's it no man this 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 area doesn't look 
got so I'll go to the deep in dark let me check no so I'll choose this cinema only here all right this is our VLC media player this is our media player this is our system settings this is our Neo Nemo sorry and rest of the packages we are still installing let me see now where have we reached we are still installing the bullet package it's taking a long time this is because of my internet connection uh, I guess the terminator has been installed is it yes it has been installed this is the shell this is my favorite in my day-to-day -day office work this is what I use I don't use it this way you need to configure it properly for example uh, I'll show you this is how I use it so you split it here I run M player this is where I run the M player all the type songs are going on here this is where I put the uh, top command and uh, now you go to the preferences go to the profile background and use the transparent color click on clothes see this is much good I need to restart okay. quickly restart it terminator is the one which we installed and go to the preferences yes you can see that it's transparent it is transparent but the problem is we haven't rebooted it I don't want to reboot it that's the reason you can see that now let me quickly vertical then horizontal here we have top and here we have m player this is what normally i prefer okay there's another one which is terminology which we have installed this is the terminology now this is even better than that terminology this also has amazing features for example if i go to the you can split it okay all right so it starts giving you all the signals and all this looks very good okay this is how it works you can increase the font size by going into the settings and you can go to the fonts and from here you can increase the font size and everything see here you can increase the font size so I don't want to go in much deeper into it as of now that's all then there is one more let me see now where we have reached the installation oh, this is almost stuck i don't know what happened oh it's done it's done okay all right see now it is becoming transparent now let me quickly start the conky and let me start the conky uh this one i can change the location from here by saying uh, i want this to be a top middle okay all right that's fine that's fine and let me go to here no, this i don't want let's see the process panel So this is enough and from here I will run the actual conky yeah you see this process tab here I can still use the conky manager let me check if I can uh, this one I'm very much interested but I don't know why so there is some issue with this package it was working earlier very nice right now you can see all good it's loaded properly now so this is how you can use it there's one more surprise for you that is the guec package this is the guec terminal 
So whenever you will press F12, you can see that whenever you will press F12, the GUIC will start. For example, I just press the F12 and you can see this. This is still transparent. You can again customize it. For example, if I go to the preferences from here, we can even, uh, you know, uh, customize it further. That's how it is. Isn't it amazing? That's Arch Linux. Arch Linux is all about the customization. That's what the Arch Linux looks like. It's in front of you. This is one of my favorite operating system. Not one of. This is the favorite operating system. This is the favorite Linux distribution. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Yeah, if you have any questions, comments, suggestion, concern, please feel free to comment. Uh, subscribe to this channel. Uh, there's a new series which I will be hosting soon, which will be on booting, how exactly Linux operating system boots. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching this video. My name is Yogesh Babar and I am signing off. Thank you.